so it doesn't stop. We need to find way to stop. Government has to cooperate with our people and we, our people also need to cooperate with the government. If the government and our people cooperate each other, I think there is a must be good solution. The tension finally spilled over in 2012. After an act of violence between members of both groups, fighting broke out across the northern part of the state, where the Rohingya is the majority and Buddhists the minority. Hundreds were killed, villages burned down, around 100,000 displaced, many still living in camps until this day. Then, in October last year, another serious incident. This time in the town of Mongdo, close to the border with Bangladesh. Nine policemen were killed in an attack and the authorities blamed armed Rohingya. Although Aung San Suu Kyi asked for calm, the backlash was violent. Army moved in and scores of Rohingya were attacked or abused. More houses set on fire. At least 80 people were killed, according to reports. The government has said that there's a group of uh, extremists, of militants, who are behind the attacks of uh, October 9, and they even call them uh, terrorists, with help from abroad. Do you think that that is true? One thing, we don't encourage any kind of insurgence. We don't encourage any kind of terrorism. And even all the Rohingya, they are peace-loving people. Uh, they will not encourage these things. So we want peace and we want to live with harmony. Although the Buddhists comprise the largest religious community in the country, 90% are Buddhists, 4% are Muslim, 4% are Christian, and 2% are Hindus. Here in the northern part of Rakhine, the Buddhists are in fact the minority. And they are now saying that they are under threat. During the violence in 2012, many of the Buddhists were also displaced. And many of them are still, five years later, living in camps. <laughs> So you ตัวเราก็ไอ้นี่ยามาก็ยังใครก็เลยโอ้พวกมึงอธิบายเนี่ยต้องยอมรับใช่มั้ยยังใครก็คนเนี่ยยอมรับใช่มั้ยคนไห
The Rohingya, on the other hand, are living under circumstances that in fundamental ways are denying them the most basic rights and freedoms. According to a United Nations report, they are often not allowed to move around. They have to ask army permission to go from point A to point B to go and visit friends or family in another village. Held up at security checkpoints, women and children have reportedly been raped and beaten. Men and women are often denied the right to go to school or work in certain professions, thereby taking away their ability to live an independent life and provide for themselves and their families. The army says they are simply trying to maintain order and security. It's difficult to independently confirm what's happening here. International media is restricted in gaining access to the area. But when Kofi Annan traveled to the camps and on another couple of occasions, we were able to meet directly with the people who live here. 